on this episode of Carnage. We're going to get this in that. On the last episode of Carnage, we finished putting together our 1UZ and then we tried to bolt it into our Lexan and found it doesn't actually fit. Yeah, we're having some real clearance issues with our brake booster here and the rocker cover or cam cover as it is on the uh, 1UZ. Yeah, it's a bit of a bummer. We thought this was going to be a straight bolt-in deal, turns out it's not. I've talked to some uh, Commodore experts They've given me some options, one of which is put a remote booster in it, another is uh, delete the booster altogether and just run no booster. Can't say I'm a big fan of that in a car that's probably going to run deep into the tens. So let's keep the booster where it is and notch the uh, cam cover instead, which is something that was actually relayed to me through the comment section a few episodes ago. Someone said, you're gonna have to notch that cover. I thought, ah, that'd be fine. They probably didn't have the right mounts. Well, it's not fine. And yep, I'm about to take an angle grinder to the cam cover. Last time we had the engine in the engine bay, I got in there with the Sharpie and just marked out the offending section. Uh, if you lift the cover off like so, you can see the actual top part of the cover is not really used at all. Like it ha serves no purpose. So basically we can hack away into that and it will not affect the cams at all. Obviously we'll have to give it a good clean afterwards, but yeah. All right, what I'm gonna do is cut away that section, give it a good blowout. We'll sit it on there, drop the engine in, make sure it clears, and then take it down and uh, see if Ben can weld it back together for us because, uh, yeah, we better make sure it fits before we seal it up. Okay, let's see if it fits. Okay, so we seem to have a bit of clearance there. The engine is a bit back down. Um, I think it will need to come up some. Yeah. Oh, it's got so much, yeah. So it's got a fair bit of clearance. Has to come up a long way to cause a problem. I guess we really need to bolt a gearbox up to this thing so we can see. While we've got our engine sitting in there, we should probably look at our exhaust manifolds and see if they're gonna fit. So let's do a little trial fit. Um, here we go, in front of the sway bar. All right, okay. The bolts are a bit long. So we can't get it in 
on in the car but that's against the head face and that looks like there's clearance it just has to be bolted to the engine when the engine goes in next let's have a look at the other side Looks like there's going to be enough room with the chassis rail, just has to be on there. So same deal as the other side, looks like there's enough room between the header and the chassis rail, but it has to be bolted to the engine before the engine goes in. So next time the engine comes out, I'm going to bolt some manifolds to it and make sure everything fits. <sighs> Yay. Well, Next thing to do is put the trans in, see how that fits, see where it sits in the tunnel and everything and see where it's, you know, make sure we've got it at the right angle and then make sure we've got clearance on that cover. But of course the trans is buried right up the back of the workshop. So that sounds like a Monday problem. It is late Friday afternoon and I think we have done pretty well so far. So let's close up the Arbo, crack a cold one, have a fresh look at this on Monday. So it is Monday and we've done a little test fit of our new Holly High Ram hat um, and worked out that it's not actually gonna fit under the bonnet. It kind of sucks. I was hoping to make this kind of stealthy and it looks like we're gonna have to put a reverse cowl on it. So it is what it is. Anyway, the moment the engine is sitting slightly laid back, um, we need to bolt up our transmission, which is sitting here on the floor. So we'll get this up on the trans jack, get the car up and we'll just put the box in, no converter to start off with because this is going to have to happen a couple times. I think we're going to have to get the, uh, the box on there and make sure it's sitting in the right spot so we can then check out our cam cover clearance. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a, uh, a thing. So let's lift this up on the trans jack, get the car up there. Make this fit. Good. Yep. So now that we've got our transmission in there, we've jacked it up. The engine still has a fair bit of layback. Right now it is at 6.2 degrees, uh, which is a fair bit compared to the diff, which is 2.2 degrees. So there's a fair angle difference between the two. Uh, we need to even them up a little bit. Our problem is though, if you come under here, The back of the transmission, the drive shaft, is hitting against the shifter box. Now, we can probably lose this shifter box because we'll probably go to a, uh, a ratchet shifter, much like we've gone in the Trolbo. Um, so we can either mount that on a flat plate or we can have a drop box. A few people use the drop box, but the drop box is going to cause us drama, so maybe we'll just go flat plate shift a straight on the flat plate and uh, yeah that's just how we're gonna have to do it and that way we get a little bit more uh, straight up and down on the engine angle 
there is always something. Obviously, that is not how it's going to sit. We're going to have to remake this trans mount to support the trans proper, but it's holding it in place just for the moment. Top side is fine, it just needs a little bit more off the bottom edge. Well, no point standing around looking at it. Just gonna have to uh, lift it back up, drop the trans down again, pull the engine out, fix that cover, and then we can get that right, and then we can make our trans mount, and then we can get a tri shaft made. Mm. Yeah, the joys of engine swaps. Before the engine goes in this time, we're going to put our exhaust headers on, see if they're going to uh, fit in the engine bay with the engine. <coughs> pipes this side sweet this side sweet <sighs> that's a relief something fits wow okay car goes up trans goes in again gotta say I'm glad we didn't weld that uh, cam cover up after the first fitment that would have been embarrassing Wow, pipes have got pretty good clearance, which is great. 
that is one less thing to worry about. All right, let's check our cam cover again. Make sure that's fine, because yeah, that's pretty much where the gearbox is gonna sit. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to lose the drop box for the shifter, and then just make up a mount that holds the trans basically in that position. So if we do end up with a discrepancy between the engine angle and the diff angle, what we can do is buy some adjustable upper trailing arms and we can control the angle of the diff with trailing arms. It's not the perfect way to do it, but it may be the only option left to us because there's only so far we can go with that without cutting the tunnel. So anyway, we'll see how we go down again. It's about 10 mil of clearance. Okay, so we got good clearance there with the cam cover. So we're gonna have to uh, take it to someone and get them to weld that up. It may have to actually carve in a little bit harder so we can make sure that that is the flat level. We can't just sort of whack a plate on top of it, otherwise it'll close up our clearance again. And we need all the clearance we can get, Clarence. Going up again. I gotta say it, how good are hoists, really? These ones are pretty good. Okay, right. We need to make a trans mount. That is pretty much where the trans is going to sit. What we're going to do is slice off the front bracket because we won't need that. We'll slice that off. Not right now, but we will. And we will make an adapter for our tough mount. So, Adapt that to that and then make a ledge off there so that can sit there, basically. All right, let's start with the gearbox side first. Holy. Slip straight on there. Okay, so what we've done is we've made an adapter plate to adapt the Toyota transmission to this tough mount and then a plate off the bottom of the tough mount which we will weld to this cross member but to do that, I need to pull the cross member out, flappy disc it, clean off all the grease and grime and paint, then we can bolt it back up in there, tack it in place, then unbolt it again, and then weld it properly, and then uh, we'll have a trans mount, and then we can cut off that section. Yeah, that's where we're at. It's gonna be awesome.
that's disgusting. Okay, that'll give us something to weld to. Now we weld it. We have a trans mount. So we have our engine, our trans, fully mounted. They ain't going anywhere. Well, actually, they both have to come out again so we can put a converter in there so we can weld up our cam cover, a whole bunch of other things. But in all honesty, the mounting of the engine and trans are probably the easiest part of this build. Yes. We still have a fuel system to do, wiring loom to create, uh, mounting the ECU, doing the Howtech dash, all that sort of stuff we got to do as well. Uh, we got to do turbo piping, intercooler piping. We don't even know if this radiator is going to be big enough for this four litre turbo setup. We've got to work out where our dump pipe is going to go and our exhaust system. We've got to get a tail shaft made up. There is so much left to do. It's kind of daunting, but We'll get through it, and you're going to see it all on future episodes of Carnage.